there's a problem with the company, whenever there's an inefficiency with, with the staff need, whenever there's an HR problem, the first idea should be, okay, does PayFit has a solution? Hey everybody, I hope you all have a great Sunday. Welcome to the Berlin Alley Girl channel about entrepreneurship and the startup scene in Berlin. My name is Miri and today I'm together with Stefan, who is the CPO of PayFit Germany. It's so great that you're here today, Thank Stefan. You. So tell us, tell our audience what is PayFit about and what is the vision of PayFit? PayFit is about to revolutionize the HR business. Um, it starts with a fully digitalized payroll product. Payroll is the core of your HR. Mm -hmm. All the data from your employees, you collect them wow. and in the end, they end in the payroll. So payroll is key to make your employees happy. We start with payroll, fully digitalized. You just bring the data of your employees into the product mm -hmm. and then we automate the payroll. We have no hassle anymore. It's very efficient and in the end we add a lot of functionalities like uh, time tracking, absences like holidays and these kind of things, uh, performance reviews, everything that's related to payroll. Um, so that in the end, if you have a problem in HR, the first thought you should have is, hey, does PayFit has a solution? And in general, yes, we do have, I think. It's amazing. So you make life more comfortable for all companies out there. That's I hope so, yeah. And this week, you guys were big in the news because you raised 70 million euros. Yes capital this is like so amazing so probably you will you will expand and grow a lot and um, what are the advantages to have like a mother based company in Paris so the big funding we just announced this Monday I'm very 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 happy about this yeah. and it shows very much the trust that the investors give it to our product but especially the trust the investors trust PayFit because the customers trust us right mm -hmm. so it tells a lot about our product and uh, we will we will put all our efforts into this product and really um, grow not just in Germany and France as well and all other markets that we have. And the biggest advantages for this German PayFit, for PayFit Germany to have PayFit France was um, in the first place um, experience sharing. So whenever we came, whenever we had a question to solve, we could ask, did you have the same problem? Um, how did you solve this problem? And secondly, um, of course, there are lots of resources. Mm. So um, we did not have to spend time on getting the funding. This was the task of the founders, but they kept our backs free so that we in Germany could focus on the product and building up the team. Nice. So we had infrastructure, which is of course this funding, but at the same time infrastructure in terms of technology that we have a great, great tech team behind us, that we have an in-house um, computer language that we program with. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so first place experience sharing, uh, secondly, of course, um, the infrastructure that was provided by us. And now um, that we're growing so fast in Germany, now we're in a place where we have to make our own decisions again. Mm -hmm. And now we also leave this kind of scope from uh, the PayFit France because we make, new, we make new experiences here, but we share those experiences with other markets like Spain, like UK and like Italy that we want to conquer the next. Amazing. Like and when we look to the beginning of PayFit Germany, because you were building Pay for Germany, right, as CPO. Yes. So what was like the first steps you took from the beginning? Because like PayFit came to Germany in 2018. Yes, so um, I started at PayFit in November 2017. Yes. So my first step was moving to Paris, Ooh, <laughs> which was a nice step. Uh, it's a very nice city. Now, the first step for me personally was really to A, dig into payroll. Mm. So most mm. people working for PayFit, um, they did not have anything to do with payroll before. Like it was not my lifetime goal to work in payroll. I discovered that it is super interesting actually to be here. So uh, shout out to the other people there. Um, <laughs> Come to so f the first place, in the first place um, I learned payroll. So mm -hmm. I really dig dug into it. I asked my flatmate, for example, who is an HR manager, like, hey, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. What's the process like? What are the problems inside this process? So first to understand payroll, but also to understand the customer process mm -hmm. and then it meant also bringing in new people. So um, I asked Niklas to join the, the product team. Mm -hmm. um, he's the CTO of Pay for Germany now. Nice. And then it was the two of us. So this was uh, February 2018. And from that point on, we built a lot on the product, but also grew the team. Um, we brought in Eric. Then uh, we had the chance to recruit our own uh, CEO, mm -hmm. uh, Geschäftsführer. Yeah. Um, so that was a very <laughs> nice. comfortable situation. Nice, and because you could choose, right? Exactly. <laughs> so we could pay attention to, okay, what kind of culture do we want to have at PayFit? Yeah. Um, culture is very important for us. So yes, first place, it was um, getting to Paris, learning the programming language, learning payroll, mm -hmm. um, building the product and building the team. Mm -hmm. And the rest, uh, I think we will talk later about. 
And like now, are you like communicate with um, the Payfit in Paris every single day? Do you have like meetings or do you have any rules you have to follow? Um, or are you hmm. working like pretty independently? Um, I think the nice thing about payroll is that payroll is national law, which means yeah. that the product we've built here, there was no guideline from France because it's a completely different law. It's a completely mm. different product. We had the infrastructure, the programming language, we get all, got all the tools we needed, but the product itself is, is unique. So there's not too much of, an, of sharing between France and Germany because the product is so different. But at the same time, in terms of process, for example, of course we do experience sharing. Of course we do, okay, how did you structure this team? How should we increase the team? What kind of positions do you see next? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think our customers would need next? What, what was the reaction in France if you did that? So in terms of process and in terms of those kind of learnings, um, we have a very, very close um, relationship to France. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the product and what our customers need and what we will um, produce next, that is a German thing. You're trying to solve problems and then to help our people or help our companies, right? Do you have like any advices for founders, entrepreneurs out there which want to like expand to another country or mm. like um, do you have an advice when a company is ready to go to another country? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I think conquering foreign markets is a very, very difficult thing. Yeah. So entrepreneurs mostly work very um, opportunity driven, mm -hmm. which in that sense can be the wrong approach. Um, so opportunity driven means some people think um, if you find the right guy for this market, just start it, it will work out in the end. Mm -hmm. Con conquering a foreign market means bringing in a different culture, um, a different culture with the clients and different working culture, for example, and different um, processes also. So the first thing you have to do um, if you want to conquer a foreign market, don't pick the one that you want to conquer the most, but pick, pick one that is a test for you. So maybe take an easy market or take a small market because you will have to improve a lot in terms of process, in terms of teams, in terms of recruiting, and you will make a many, many, many mistakes. And if you make those mistakes in a very essential market, it's not a good thing to do. So start with the test market. And then the second thing is you have to be very pragmatic, of course. So many founders, they trust themselves the most because they have built the company mm. and they have built all processes. But the problem with that is most founders, they're not very experienced at the same time. So they did not have seen many different companies. So when you bring in new people, bring in also senior people that they come with more process ideas to improve your processes. So pragmatic means you have to learn fast again and you have to change what work for your, for your home market. You may have to do it very differently in the new market and that's the learning you have to make. Um, so you really have to be very pragmatic with your own solution. When we're going back to Payfoot and your position, so what do you normally do as CPO? Um, normally, as a CPO, I would mostly focus on the product, like yeah. what I would define the roadmap. I would talk to our sales department, to our customers department, to our product department, like what kind of features do you need next and what kind of features should we build next in order to mm. um, be successful in the market or to, ha or to have high um, satisfaction rates and those kind of things. Um, honestly, right now, um, as it is very entrepreneurial, my role here is more the one of a scrum master at the moment. Oh, nice. Okay. Because if you found a company, especially if it's a SaaS company as we are, um, process is key. When we are talking about growth, like what kind of position can like maybe students get at Payfit or all what kind of, of job opportunities? Of I mean, you're looking for people right now. Exactly. So. Um, yes, all kinds of positions, honestly. Um, I think uh, we have one limitation. Um, mm. We need people who are able to speak German because mm. it's a very German product, it's very German customers and German law is German. Mm. So unfortunately we cannot really um, accept only English speaking people. So you need to speak German but then you can support us in any kind of, any kind of way. So we are looking for student workers um, in our administration um, to help us doing some customer processes mm. which are not fully optimized yet. Um, at the same time, you can after you've graduated or whatever, um, we look. We have a lot of positions, full-time positions, um, with a lot of goodies, um, goodies, which we have. We have a great team culture, and we have a, we have a very strong growth potential, which yes. I think is uh, very appealing to all kind all kinds of uh, yeah, students. Do you have like one last advice or a message you want to share and get out of the to the community? Oh, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> um, I would just say check out our product and if you want to build your own startup, um, some, one thing I've learned about German startups is mm. they start branding and then build the product. And what I love about Payfit is that we're a very product driven company. Mm. We started with the product first mm. 
and, and I think until we had 100,000 clients, no, until we had 100,000 MRR, 100,000 euros per month, we did not have any logo, any branding. It just worked because the product was key. Mm. Um, and I think that's the learning I also made and I would uh, encourage young founders to do, it's like focus on a product first. Mm. Do not focus on branding first, focus on a product and the rest comes second. And But the rest will succeed as well. Thank you very much, Stefan. You're welcome. So now we are at the end of our interview. Thank you so much for watching and leave a like there and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos. And thank you so much, Stefan, for being here today. So goodbye. Bye. Bye.